supposed to be like the bonus on Patreon or whatever. So she. I, Wait, are, are we recording now? We are recording. No, we don't have to say what we're talking about, but I, I uh, was the one who agreed to film it. I was like, yeah, set the camera up, do the colors or whatever, put it on autofocus, and I'll film it. And so I'm, I'm in there filming her giving this guy a head. Bumblecla. And it, like, he couldn't finish, like every guy ever. I, you know what's in so the funny? Adult world. I remember and, you told me this story. Yeah. And that was before I even ended up meeting her. Oh, really? So you told me that whole thing about like, oh, yeah, just had the girl in here and he, he couldn't get hard and all this I stuff. I totally forgot about that story because that girl is, you know, trumpeting you and Andrew Tate, et cetera, on social media. And I totally forgot about the fact that I saw her giving a hit. Yeah. Well, that's the social media world. Small world. It was cool, you know. I was happy to be there. <laughs> Were you? I mean... I'm always down to watch a sex act. Yeah. You yeah. know what's funny, too? We, when we On the first podcast, <laughs> we were talking about how uh, eating these kind of gross. Oh, my God. And it's just like the whole act, like this, the smell and stuff. Like it's just not that appealing. And then this page made fun of us uh, called um, like Republican Cope or whatever. And saying these like basically they were calling us gay because we were like, yeah, I don't really like to get. I head. think the first person who clipped it, though, was one of these bread tube guys or something, because I was watching the whole thing unfold because you got to understand that that clip got me so much hate within the adult star world, oh, really? of which I'm a part of, because in the clip, the way that they cut it, you couldn't tell that it was a totally sarcastic conversation, at least from my perspective. We're just talking. We're just talking shit. Yeah. I'm very happy to put my mouth on a woman's private parts. OK. Any woman. Clarifying it. A bum sitting sitting across the street, baking in the sun? No. Let me in. I'm down. No, you're not. No, I'm not. But in, generally speaking, I'm happy to do that. And it actually motivated me to do that a lot more on Plug Talk. So my work didn't accomplish anything? No, you didn't deprogram me. Oh, okay. But that, oh my God, so many girls are just quote tweeting and being like, this guy hates women, he hates women. And, and I was just like under fire to the extent where I didn't even want to issue a, a rebuttal. But just it, let him talk. It did kind of seem like it came and went because I don't hear anything about it now. No, but, but. it just went mega viral. It's just funny how like one little moment we're just joking around like, yeah, it, we're just, just like, it's kind of gross. Like just describing the way no, it looks. But we were talking about it for like two minutes straight, super dry, just being like, yeah, it's gross. It's dirty. It's disgusting. Why would anyone ever want to go near? Like we're just describing it like it's the worst thing on earth. And it looks so bad. You know what's funny is the cancel culture that we get is pretty opposite. If I say that I like eating my right. community is like what you simp you're the, you're and then if you say you don't like eating you're a misogynist you don't promote <sighs> sex work it's the complete opposite demographic because let me tell you i'm in two different worlds where oftentimes things are viewed very very differently like i'm gonna i'm gonna hit you with a bombshell right now that might kind of okay. surprise you which is that recently over the weekend my girl after seven years of only sleeping with me and only recording corn with me Shot her first ever scene with a guy. Oh, no. Besides me. How, how did that go? Well, it's not out yet or anything. I'm actually, like, people hearing this, this might be the first time they hear about it. Bombshell. Why? Of course, I'm the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that no, I told Destiny about it earlier, oh, which wow. is even better. Okay, okay, except okay. he was with Crip Mac, which made it a little hard to get the words out because Crip Mac just kept talking about Crippin. But, um, yeah, I agreed. I was like, you know what? She's only going to be doing this uh, adult content for a couple more years, realistically. You know, why not let her... Do what she's got to do business wise. How did you select the guy? It's actually somebody that I'm real cool with that stood out to us as like, okay, he would make sense because he's like very high profile. You picked the guy? I, I wouldn't say I picked him, but he was just kind of like one of the obvious ones. And, you know, I know him. He's a cool guy. So I'm kind of, but, but I, I say that and you can let me know what you think of that. But <laughs> it's viewed very differently in the two different worlds because in the adult content space, I mean, I'm assuming that a lot of the girls are going to be like, oh, my God, that's so cool that you let her do that. It's, yada, yada, yada. it's amazing. You know, blah, blah, blah. It'll probably be like make her super lit for a period of time. But then meanwhile, I'm prepared for within the hip hop space to be absolutely attacked for it. Yeah, you're going to get. So you there's know. going to be some lyrics about it for sure. Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, I'm thinking mostly like YouTubers and streamers. There's some bars in there. If that's going to get me in some songs, that's cool, though. That is pretty cool. Is that the way you want to be remembered for? It's not that those allegations never leave. What of being a cuck? Yeah. Yeah, because you get it hard. No, it's never gonna And and the thing with you leave. is that you just like talked about it. Whereas this, like, I haven't actually seen it yet, but Oh, you, you know, haven't seen it yet. The content? No, but like it's gonna be on Twitter. It's gonna I'm gonna at least see the trailer. Right. Probably not gonna go out of my way to see the full like half hour version or whatever. Yeah, but, please, yeah, don't. 
I, I don't know that I, I need it. to see you that. Know, it's never going to remove. I feel like the trailer will probably show me a few of the essential angles, and that would be good enough. But I don't know. There's part of me that just felt like, you know, if this is going to like be really beneficial to her career, and me and her have slept with, I don't know, maybe like 300 girls together over the years. It's fair. I don't know. Is it fair? It, feel, it didn't feel like the biggest deal. I mean, that, that was my mindset is like we do in this previous relationship. Obviously, I don't do that anymore. And right. I, like, I, I want to get married. I don't, I don't even want to date. We could talk like about this. your transformation so, for sure. Yeah. yeah so so I, I completely um, don't advocate for that lifestyle at all. But when I was uh, doing degenerate stuff, that was my mindset. Like we do with all these girls and I, she lets me do threesomes. So it's like, let me make it fair. And, but how but, long did you even date the girl that you did this with? It was on and off for like for a while. It was, oh, okay. Yeah, it wasn't that serious. I mean, if it's a girl that you're not even like really that serious with, then I especially don't think. But it's you're that doing big it with your deal. wife. I know. Who you have a kid with, and you were just traveling across Europe. So before we go into this degenerate stuff, I was really happy. Like I messaged you all the time, <laughs> when, like because I thought you were all this. You're this. like using me as an example of someone who's in porn but living like a healthy lifestyle and has the right attitude about girls and sex. I heard you mention me on uh, Fresh and Fit recently, but yeah, this what did is, I say? You were just like, you know, I had a conversation with Adam 22 the other day, and he was telling me how even after having sex with, you know, hundreds and hundreds of girls that he, yeah. he finds way more fulfillment in the family thing and everything like that. Yeah, I think that's dope. I, I don't agree with you on uh, on everything, but I like to see your your Instagram stories, and I always respond to them. Like, you, you travel, uh, you spend like a, a month off, you were in Europe. It was your honeymoon. Was Congratulations. Amazing. That's dope. Best time of my life. And just you seem really happy as a father, and yes. which I didn't expect. I've been watching your content for years, and to see you doing the dad thing, like you're pushing the on the swing yeah. and all this stuff, it's really cool to see. Well, so, uh, okay, let me put it like this. A long time ago, I was listening to a Joe Budden podcast, and he was talking about how he has a really hard time listening to music at this point because once you get really into the music industry, it's hard to just listen to a song and not think about the the you know the reasons why that song was created like you know you hear a song and you're like oh this is his street song to try to like get the bodegas turned up and then this is his love song to try to get the girls tuned in and once you start like mm. realizing that album rollouts are usually very similar and a lot of these songs are just not really like created holistically they're, they're all just... strategic and he knows the label side of it so and it at that the... point you know you grew up loving hip-hop and now all of a sudden your perspective on it is kind of like god damn this shit is formula formulaic as fuck yeah. and you know that kind of makes it hard to like just hear Enjoy music it. and just feel this like passionate response and i would kind of say the same thing about sex where you know when i think about like the early days <laughs> wow. of my relationship I was dying to have different threesomes and crazy without experiences and shit like that. But then once you start shooting porn and, you know, a day at work might be me f***ing two or three different girls with my girl, it, it's kind of like, it makes it hard for me to understand, like, when I see, like, a, I, I hear these stories about rappers or NBA players who are just, like, chasing f like crazy and they're giving girls all this money per month to be around so that they can f*** them more and stuff. And yeah. I'm just kind of like, as a dude who's doing this, as a source of income, that now seems quite foreign to me. I mean, what what seems foreign to you? Like spending your entire life chasing and just like acting like it's the most important thing in the world. Yeah, it's not. It, it's it's just like the biggest waste of time ever. Yeah, it's it's the biggest time suck. It's just not worth it. And the reality is, is that if you want to have good sex, meaningful sex, you're probably going to get that by having sex with the same woman over and over, and not. But Which just, is great to see that you've been with hundreds of girls and you're and you're the one saying that. Yeah. It's like you, everybody like inherently knows that, but still, like that's the number one thing that's going to hold men back is their lust. I would say the same thing happened with uh, probably like with Andrew Tate. He's like facing all these charges right now. Mm -hmm. He's he's completely innocent, but the number one vice that men are probably excused of is lust. Yeah. And it, you see so many countless examples of men going down over and over again. Even the president, like Bill Clinton, for example, like went down because he was getting some head. That's like the one thing that men are not shamed enough for that can really ruin your whole career. Like McGregor's getting accused yeah. of R word. Uh, every man, and I've seen this my whole life and that's why I've been very careful, stuff like that. I've recorded so many stuff, audio messages, just like, even when I was like 15, 16, that's why you're not gonna see any allegations against me because I was always aware. That's the number one thing that could ruin a man's entire career. Yeah. And so it's just it's just best, I would say, for if there's any like teenage uh, men watching, the best thing to do is, is to avoid that. And I know I'm saying this now and 90% of the guys aren't gonna do it. They're gonna continue to chase anyway. Mm -hmm. Even me probably, you know, like I'm gonna, I don't wanna put it out and say I'm gonna, mess up but it's probably going to happen but that's the number one it, it's like it's just i see it equivalent to being a drug addict right 
it's this, it's just a dopamine release and there's nothing fulfillment fulfilling 100%. about it. Yeah. Because for me, like I'm very happy to be in a committed relationship where I'm, you know, sleeping in the same bed with this girl and having meaningful experiences that are going way outside of, of sex and everything with the family and the, you know, and you make a lot of money. Like why still do porn? Well, that's part of making a lot of money, <laughs> but <laughs> you're right though. I, I don't have to do the porn thing, but you know, I don't Same know. thing with your your wife too. You like you make so much. Do you re, does she need to do that? She doesn't need to do it, no, but doesn't. it feels like you know this is her career. This is what she's been doing for six seven years, and it's not like you know. I, I think there's part of her that wants to kind of see what the heights of her career could be because of the fact that her always being with me sort of held her back financially a little bit because like the number one most requested thing is that they want to see her with the BBC. Oh, was a, it was a black dude. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, is it really that it, like, why even view it as a career? It's something, it's an intimate act and you're separating that and turning it into a job. Yeah, but at a certain point, raking in six figures a month from doing adult content becomes kind of part of your, your identity, you know? And Did, like, does she want that or be her identity? I think she just realizes that she's probably in the twilight of that and that at some point. This is the last chance. Yeah, I mean, we're probably going to have another kid within like two, three years, and we're probably going to have another kid. And at that point, I mean, let me tell you, having a kid makes the whole being a porn star thing for the woman you know, infinitely more difficult. Yeah. I mean, that's what's going to happen. Have you, I mean, this this might get personal, but like, have you thought about what's going to happen when your kid starts finding out about this stuff? Nah. Forget it? I mean, it's just, you know, it is what it is. She'll have, like, she already, if she knew what was going on, she'd realize that like a large percentage of her mom's friends did this or do this. So it's just a normal I mean, I just don't think that it'll necessarily carry the same level of oomph once my kid gets to the age where she understands. And obviously, you're going to like hide it from her until she is as old as possible so that she'll hopefully be able to kind of get it. Or maybe she could like get it in steps like, oh, mom, mom is a model. Mom's doing a photo shoot today. Like people, oh, mom makes money because people like the photos of mom. Mom's getting BBC'd. And then at some point, it's like, <laughs> oh, mom and dad were doing more than just taking photos. I mean, I'm not going to say that it's going to be the easiest conversation in the world nah. over time, but I definitely know a lot of corn parents who their kids get it. Don't really give a shit. Don't. Really, I mean, we, we kind of have wokeness to thank for that. Thank you. LGBTQ pioneers out there for sort of like the whole sex worker normalization thing. I think it kind of comes with that. And a lot of these kids like yeah, but that, that's probably also, think that this is the kind of thing that is, it's not okay to look down on somebody for that. But Hopefully, that's what's destroying. Crossed. That's what's destroying the West. That's why LA is so you love LA, right? I like the fact that it has the best weather in the country, has the most opportunities. But the for culture me is just like one in three people. You have no idea what gender they are. They're just walking <laughs> around and they're just like, "What hair do they have? What's their body? They have an Adam's apple and boobs." You so, don't know. Okay, I can't confirm these alien people walking around. I, I can't confirm that ratio, but I will say that I went to the farmers market the other day and maybe I saw a hundred people at the farmers market in total. P pretty popping farmers market, so it might be two hundred. I saw at least three trans people. So that really had me thinking like, yeah, this ratio is going up. But don't you see how that's you're using wokeness to justify like, OK, well, woke culture is so strong right now. By the time my kid grows up, sex work is going to be so normalized that I won't even have to explain. It. It's just going to be a regular thing. That is one part of wokeness that I can appreciate. Also, like, you know, <laughs> normalizing, you know, gay people feeling acceptable in society, normalizing, you know, like, they're, 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 wokeness they're, has a wide range of things that it affects i mean like you know yeah. the fact that like uh you know a, a black guy feels safer walking down the street that he's not going to be i don't know tackled by the police as often i mean wokeness is about also rooting that out from society as well right Do black guys just get tackled by the police for crossing the street i've never heard that. well okay it might be a little I'm, bit of an exaggeration but <laughs> i don't think that's ever happened to I mean, okay like there are a lot of things that fall under the woke umbrella right? that's true but Good I, I think those are really overinflated and the, the gay acceptance thing, that's the number that people think that... So th this is where wokeness doesn't make any sense. Mm. As they'll say, like, gay people need to be normalized, but then they wave LGBT flags at the White House. And the president and is show with... show their titties. Yeah, the, and the, tranny, titties. the president's with a tranny on the White House lawn. So mm. it's like, are you guys... It's like, oh, we need to go accept this. It's accepted. Mm. They're waving the flags everywhere. They replaced the American flag with the pride flag. There's a whole month to celebrate this stuff right now. 
The people are walking through the streets saying that we were going for your kids. We're oh, going for your kids. When I saw that clip, I was like, they don't want to be accepted. Like, if they really wanted to be accepted, they'd be willing to cede some ground and 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 admit that like chanting we're we're gonna we're coming for your kids is not a good idea. And it's like the same thing with the trans uh, sports conversation. Like, if if the LGBTQ community was really con- concerned with being accepted, they would give up on some parts of their platform, such as the fact that, like, you know, letting biological males play against women in sports is just fucking atrocious. But it's not, that's the thing, it's not about acceptance. Mm. It's about converting everybody to gay. Mm. Because gay people <laughs> can't reproduce. And that's the number, that's the reason that we exist. God created everybody so that we can reproduce. And that's why you look so happy as a father and why that makes me happy seeing that you're enjoying fatherhood. Because that's that's the reason why we exist. And the LGBT people, they will always resent the fact that they can never fulfill their purpose. So they reproduce by coming for the children. Well, but they can reproduce through surrogates. We see gay dudes with kids that they but adopt that's, that's all the not, time. That's, that's not, not the real. Same, that's but. not real reproduction. They reproduce, and they don't even really want. They don't want kids. They don't want straight kids. They want more gay people. That's why it's not about acceptance. It's about making everybody gay. So they they get more gay people by touching a kid, by putting a frag in a school. A by frag? A flag. I oh, a flag. Be- became Sorry. Asian for a second. Okay. <laughs> that's a, that's their way of reproducing it. it I'm down it, for the critique of, of wokeness, but I don't think that the vast majority of these people actually want to like indoctrinate kids into being gay. Well, then why are they chanting, we're coming, we're here, we're queer, we're coming for your children? I think that is a very specific group right there. I know, and but the 10 the years average, ago- The average gay person is looking at that clip thinking, what the fuck? Is that true? I think if they're, I at think. That, if they're at that Pride Parade, one, they wouldn't say anything. Two, most of them would probably just join in the chant. And even 10 years ago when we legalized gay marriage, people were like, all the religious people were like, this is a bad, slippery slope. And they're like, no, we need to accept this. But look where we are now. Ten years ago, you couldn't imagine a, a parade of people in a park publicly saying we're queer, we're coming for your kids. Yeah. And now that's happening. So what's going to be in ten years? The slippery slope thing—they always say it's a logical fallacy. But where are we going to be in ten years? If right now in a park you could say we're coming for your children and we're queer? I, I kept waiting for like a community uh, note to pop up on that clip, just because it felt like this has to be a psyop. This it's has like to be fake. This has to be AI. a bunch of right wing dudes who are just fucking with them and like no. chanting it. They're too ugly because to be you fed. do see that. You'll see people who go to like gay pride marches and they'll hold up like pro pedophilia signs to get a photo just to make people go crazy on I Twitter. Seen that. I've, I've seen a little bit of this where it's like people will show up and take a photo just to piss people off on Twitter. But I mean, when you see like 50 people chanting something, it's kind of hard to believe that that was all. No, and they look just like the woke people. They have the titties that they dress just like them. See, the feds, the fed slaps is really obvious to see on the right wing. They'll do this. They'll show up in like full black mass and they'll do how They'll, pr- right. they'll pretend like they're they're Nazis, even right. though it's very clearly that they're Fed psyops. Uh, but these people are they're That's just their ideology. That's what the plus is in LGBT. People wonder what the what is a plus? Pedophilia. That's the next step. That's the only other thing that they haven't normalized. I think they booted the pedophiles out of the gay rights movement a long time ago. They just changed the name to MAP. Kind of we- weeding their way back in. I mean, they they want to. They're saying that you should be able to transition when you're 12 years old. They're saying that we should give like you can't vote until you're you're 18. You can't drink until you're 21, but you can get a transgender surgery at any age, according to these people. I know, I and mean, that's like another example of something that if they wanted to be accepted, they would take a look at that and be like, okay, maybe we should admit that 12 is too young to start transitioning. But they're they're never going to compromise because it's not about acceptance. They are accepted. They they rule over everything. The president's on their side. The flag's everywhere. They're taken over. Mm. It's not about acceptance. It's about turning the culture gay. <laughs> but it's fine. You know the, the funny thing, too, is that, shout out to Ryan Dawson, LGBT, they know that there's two genders. There's only two genders. And they know it, too. What does the B stand for in LGBT? Bisexual. What is bisexual? That's a binary Two. Yeah. That means there's two sex. So even in their own acronym, they're acknowledging that there's two genders. And then the T, the one after, is saying, well, there's all these other. It doesn't make any sense. What's yeah. the Q? What, what's the, what are the Q people? Does anyone know? Yeah, what does queer mean? It's That's just a slur. That's just like the F word with the suppressor on you it. You see Elon Musk saying the cis is a slur now? That's funny. I was confused by that. Yeah, it funny. never occurred to me that cis might be a slur. It's just normal. It's just the sort of baseline thing, right? Just regular. That's why it didn't occur to me that it could be a slur. You can get, can you get banned on Twitter for that? He's like suggesting that that may be the future of the platform. Although I, I mean, that's going to result in like damn near all of these fucking uh, gay rights people getting banned, right? Do you get triggered when you hear the word "sit"? I, I get a little bit triggered. I wouldn't say I get triggered, but I'm, I don't find it terribly useful. What did you see in Europe 
that you don't see in LA, for example. I, per, I asked if you love LA because like you're here all the time. You set up everything. Like you embrace a lot of LA. Cool. I I don't. I mean I. I I'm being I'm nice right now. I hate LA. Mm. I when, if I was not here, I would just be honest. I'm really not outside like that. I'm here and I'm at home and right. I spend very little time doing anything besides maybe going to a restaurant, going to the mall once in a blue. I don't, you know, I, I wouldn't say I'm like really tapped into like the the, the weird culture. cultural spaces that might. That's why when I go to the farmers market and I saw three trans people, I was like, oh okay, I'm going to like the it. most bland thing that I could possibly do on a Sunday morning, and they're out here, so it's really happening. Because if I was still in those fucking cocaine den, ketamine warehouse parties that I used to be in, mm. I'm sure my knowledge of the trans community would be a lot more. More in tune. I'm sure there's a lot more hanging out in those sort of environments. Yeah, all the drag queen people, they do the drag queen parties, and then they take meth and do sex parties right after. Yeah, and they keep Narcan on them so they can save their own lives if they start to overdose. Really? Oh, you know about Narcan? Narcan's the revival thing. Yeah. But what did you see in Europe? That uh, that's why I've been traveling so much is to see like when, when then you come back to LA, you come back to a woke place and you see just how terrible it is. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that I saw a lot of like really unwoke stuff out there. My, if anything, what stood out to me because my girl booked like five star hotels. We're going to like you know the the best restaurants in the world, and we're like you know just being around like ridiculously affluent people i didn't know who most of them were but i could tell at some of the places that i was staying that it was like oh these are real deal rich people and being here and paying this much to stay in a hotel every night is nothing to them mm -hmm. and that was kind of mind-blowing because i've never been around that sort of like wealth before but they're all those are all tourists that were just there vacationing at yeah, spots definitely when i was in florence italy like okay we, we are in the bar or we're in a restaurant you walk outside and you're, you're kind of expecting to like you know catch a bit of italian culture and you, you know you're just we're standing there smoking or whatever and we just see like 20 in some cases very attractive girls just marching towards us and we're thinking in our head that they're going to be a bunch of italian chicks and then you start hearing their fucking voices and they're like they're from detroit they're from they're like they are from america it's just like the most touristy place in the world that all these kids come out here to do semesters abroad so they're all like college age chicks that are just you know they're they're from where i'm from more or less so you didn't really see any culture you just saw a bunch of rich tourists well, you see a lot of nice buildings and stuff you get to eat a lot of good food but was i no yeah i was around way more tourists than salt of the earth people you know you get to hear talk to the maid for two minutes that's that's it yeah that's the <laughs> criticism against tourism and traveling is that you only get to talk to like the hotel employees and some waiters and then you don't really get a sense of the culture at all yeah totally but you know that feeling you get when you're overseas and you feel very isolated because nobody speaks the same language as you mm -hmm. yeah i didn't have like almost any of that because there was so many tourists that's the arrogance of americans too we just walk everywhere and no, all over the world and like can i get a water and like let me get a, like a taxi and i just... was shocked at times when i would realize like oh this this cleaning lady it doesn't speak good english like it would be like oh fuck i finally found somebody who doesn't speak the same language as me that we're so arrogant and so privileged to have, oh, to speak yeah. English. It's just like you you understand when you travel how overpowered it is in order to make money and things like that. The level of communication, even starting a podcast, like little things that speaking English can open doors to that we don't really acknowledge until you go travel and, and see a lot of places. I've been traveling a lot. I've been all over. I went to Morocco, went to Spain. I was traveling like around the same time as you. I, know, I saw that. Yeah. No, yeah, I have like a memory of uh, meeting this girl in Russia when I went out there for a BMX trip back in like 2014. And getting along like really good with her and then like slowly realizing we're never going to turn into anything because her English wasn't good enough. And like we we're just so limited in the conversations that we were able to have as a result of that. You know, you don't think it's better when she speaks little English. You have the from I, your perspective, I could see how that would be a good thing so because better. you just want to subjugate women. <laughs> subjugate from, for me, I'm really looking for like some some good conversation. Like I don't know what the fuck we're from gonna a do woman. Otherwise, yeah. What are you gonna talk to a woman about? Uh, I don't know. Life, art, art and life, anal. I don't know. Just anal, everything, bro. Like you I can mean, speak about anal and broken English. For me, like peen the, and the, butt poop. The like, conversation is like the whole thing. I think mm. that actually podcasting sort of ruined dating for me. Yeah, because you're used to such a high level of conversation where people are like trying hard and drinking energy drinks and like looking for the next topic while they're still speaking. Yeah. And then you go on a date and then she's like, well, I mean, it's just nothing. Yeah, I go on a date and That's then it's like saying. I'm reviewing the date in my head as if it's a podcast. And if there's like an <laughs> awkward like 90 seconds of us not talking to each other, it's just kind of like, wow. Why this am I here? Sucks. This is yeah. never gonna work. This is never gonna get any views. That the same thing too. That uh, podcasting red pilled me on dates and how much of a waste of time it is. But that that's why I don't look. I don't date one on one the way I used to. 
back when I was like in my uh, late teens or when I was like 20, 21, I would go on dates and like do the job interview type thing. Like, oh, mm. what do you do? Are you interesting? Impress me. And I don't ever think that a woman is capable of impressing me with their conversation skills anymore. I don't you go. never feel that way? I, there's no point in going into it with that mindset because like how many failed <laughs> dates have you had like that? I've never been like, whoa, she's really funny. Never. So I, it's I, what I think is better to bring a couple of your boys and then they bring some dates too. You're on a double date situation. I was in Morocco and I went on a date and I was with like two of my friends that I hadn't seen in a long time. They had some girls and then I'm like, hey, come over for dinner. Yeah. And then I surprise her, like I ambush her and there's a whole group. And now I don't have to talk to her. I, I can keep her. watching. <laughs> ambush her, yes. Group date. I don't need to speak to you. But then that's that's it's better because the conversation's fun. When she gets boring, you turn over here. You keep your hand on her so that it's like she feels involved. And you, there's not that one-on-one. -on -one. Like it's a, such a high-pressure thing. You're looking into her eyes. Okay, like, but what about going out of your way to go on dates with women who actually stimulate something within you uh, intellectually? Thank you. This is not possible. You think it's not possible? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, all right. I'll, I'll just say that anytime that we do porn, and I end up like kind of clicking with the girl. Yeah. Obviously, I'm not looking for a romantic encounter or whatever. But I love women. I love being around the energy that they bring to the table. And you know, if anything. That is the one thing that I kind of miss about dating is like rolling the dice and like potentially like getting along really, really well with somebody, you know, like just yeah, the what getting if. to meet them. And, you know, obviously the, the whole sexual thing is great and everything. But like just I don't know, I like I like feeling out somebody's personality. And like when you really meet a woman who who is just a great time, I mean, I, I really feel like you're, you're being a little too close minded with that. You can meet a woman that you, you really want to like that spurs something inside you intellectually. That you connect with and everything. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I can't tell if you're doing a little act here, but I'm, I'm, I'm really not. I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm trying to thank you, but I've I've been on, I've had that mindset, and I've been on countless dates, and it's just such a waste of time. I'm not gonna lie. Even when I went on Fresh and Fit, there was like a couple of chicks there. Oh, I was no. like, oh, come like, on, I would like to kick it with them. Like what? they're cool. <laughs> like, I, Fresh and, and Fit, and I'm saying this is Yo, like the you're bottom lying. of the barrel in terms of like women, but there was still like a couple of them where I was like, oh, she would be like fun to hang out with. Like I mean, I I would say that on average, I'd rather spend time with a woman than a man. And talk about like, what do you, what's the conversation? What does it go to? What, what is their life experience? Like most girls, especially if they're attractive. Cause one, if you want to spend time with her, she has to be attractive. Correct. I mean, for me, if I'm considering dating her, sure. If and just if, even around women. If you, I'm just going to be friends with her now. You're friends with women. I mean, at this time, not so much, but I'm not really friends with anybody because I pretty much just work and then go home to my family. Fair. But if you're going to have a woman around your life, or the prerequisite is that she's somewhat attractive. If you're not monetizing, you're not doing a podcast with some giant whale who has a nickname or whatever. If, you just, if you're just Gorlock. around a girl. Yes, yeah, a Gorlock to destroy, right? If you're not monetizing it, or that's a dude, by the way, but right. she has to be attractive. If she's, attra if she's attractive, which she probably is because you're going to want to be around her, she doesn't have to develop any personality. She's never had to. She's getting attention just for the fact that she exists. Well, she there, there's a lot of women who are getting by on the fact that they're attractive. Like, that's one thing I've noticed in L.A. especially because when I think about, like, growing up in New Hampshire, I mean, and granted, I only lived there until I was, like, 19 or 20, but it's like there's not a lot of, like, super hot chicks. And, and if they do, if they are, they leave. They're out. They're out <laughs> by the time they're, they're 18. Here. They go to college. They move here. They move to Miami, whatever. But I would say that out here I've met so many girls that fall into, like, the 10 category and that – more often than not, they are some of the worst people. Because they don't have to. Like, yeah. why, why would they have to be funny or why interesting? Try? Yeah. There's no point because people are just going to be like, whoa, they're actually, that's the psyop is you're going to be sitting across from a 10 out of 10. And you're going to be like, she's really inspiring me about art. But if you recorded the conversation, she's not really saying anything. Mm -hmm. She's kind of just there about or like questioning you and you're the one entertaining. Okay, how about this? You named one interesting woman, right? Name one funny woman. I know they're out there. Come on, you do podcasts. You did four interviews today, right? Funny woman. You've been doing this for over a decade. Name, name one funny woman. Oh, I know they're out there. The, the fucking girl that you were just talking to out there, don't call me white girl. She's hilarious. Is she? Yes. Is she? Her podcast is amazing. All right. What did she talk about? Mm, I don't know. Her fucked up past. Okay. Dating, whatnot. There you go. So the only funny women in like there's like her and there was one on Joe Rogan. This Ugh, fat put me on the spot. So this fat black there. woman. Uh, it, it's traumatized women. If they have like a fucked up past or they're really overweight or something like that, and they have to deal with a bunch of things and get over it, 
that's kind of they turn masculine. They'd be like, "Yeah, I'm gonna beat you up." They'd be uh, just turn into men. I was gonna say that though. That some of the like very overweight women that I know are like the funniest and, and best personalities I know because they kind of have they to have to be adapt to society. They have to in compensate, that way. Yeah. for their weight. Yeah, there's a lot of truth to that. Or they have a really messed up past and they just they had to cope with their terrible reality with humor. And that's just, it's a masculine trait because you don't want to, I mean, women are better when they're not traumatized whatsoever, when they don't have to deal with anything because that just, men become better through trauma. Men have to, they develop things. If you go through any struggle as a man and you come out of it, you're going to be better. That's what I'm hoping will happen with my girl fucking this guy. <laughs> Bumble <Bumbuk -la. laughs> Well, the rea what, what is the I'll possibility? come out the other side a little bit better, right? You will come out the side better, but what, what, hap what, what if in this reality you said, like, he's a black dude, whatever, all this stuff, like, white guys have this thing with, I don't know what it is. But what if she's never going to be able to be satisfied the same way or something? Mm, I'm not super worried about that. Okay. But you're not going to be? You think I should worry about that? You, what about the PTSD? You're going to, like, in this intimate moment with your wife, you're going to be thinking, like, oh, you fucked my back. Well, I mean, she fucked all these other guys before me, too, right? Yeah. It's not like well, she forgot. You don't have any flashbacks? To what? Like, the, uh, all the other guys she's been with that isn't, like, flash in your head, like, Vietnam? Yeah. I mean, I don't want to date a girl who's got, like, you know, one sex partner. Like, I feel like... Why? Because they got to be around the block in order to, like... What? Get some life experience. Why do you want a girl with life experience? Because otherwise... I mean, like, I have a lot of friends who got married. Not a lot, but I know some guys who got married at, like, 19, 20, 21... And like the girl that they married was like the f they were her first sex partner in some cases, and it inevitably just blows up because the girl doesn't know what the fuck she wants. Well, that's the guy's fault for getting married at nineteen. The yeah. ideal marriage is probably like late twenties for a guy, and then late teens, early twenties for the girl. Right, because that's what I was gonna say earlier is that for me, I'm happy being in this relationship. But my advice to like dudes who are in their teens or twenties is like not just like shack up and just get married to the first chick you meet that you like in the west you yeah. need a lot of experience you need to know what the fuck's going on because if you just race into a relationship it's just not going to work out but that's just for western guys because of how much trauma you have to deal with in all the astrology conversations and just how much programming all these girls have where you need to navigate all the bs well an astrology conversation for sure is going to be an, an automatic no for me if a girl starts talking about her sign yeah that's witchcraft yeah, I have an employee who keeps talking about horoscopes in front of me, and I just don't even know what no. the fuck to say whenever as soon they as do a, it. As soon as a girl says, uh, what's your birthday? No. No. Yeah. I refuse. You got to stand strong. Yeah, because we do these uh, birthday posts on the Plug Talk Instagram. Like every time a girl we had on the podcast before, <laughs> it's her birthday, so we, we post it. And I could tell that one of the girls who works for us gets really hyped on the birthdays. Yeah. It, she feels like it tells her something about them, and oh, yeah, that yeah, I just yeah. don't. that's some LA conversations right there. I nah, just can't it, astrology signs. It's like that's okay. extra. L okay, porn star astrology <laughs> excitement is the most LA. They're not combo. porn stars. They're just working in the porn industry. But, what it just yeah, that's very. But I had that experience where I remember being down south when I was probably nineteen or twenty, and there was like uh, we were hanging out with a bunch of girls, and one of these dudes that we were friends with came through with a big ass horoscope book. Mm. And the girls are just on him. They're loving the fact that he's interested in horoscopes and talking to him about it and shit. I'm just like, what the fuck is this? That guy was lying to get pussy. He might have been so vapid and fucking lame that he actually enjoyed it, which is way worse mm. than just faking it. But he would have never been interested if it didn't get him through the door with a girl. I, don't, I just don't know if he was savvy enough. I think he might have just actually been that lame. But Wait, go back to that. What do you mean like you, you want a girl with experience? I just feel like... If a girl is going to work out with me in the long term, she needs to have slept with a bunch of guys. Why? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> okay, and your definition of a bunch might be different than mine, but I just don't think, like, if, okay, if I had met my girl and she had never slept with anybody, I just feel like she would be waiting her whole life, like, just feeling like, you know, wondering what was out there. I think that's how you end up in a situation where a girl cheats on you or whatever. Because you've been wondering too much? Because she's still going to be curious about what's out there. Like, the fact that I know that my girl has been around rich dudes in the club, standing on the couch, and that that's not enticing to her, or the fact that I know that I can bring rappers around her or whatever, and that it's not going to, like, she's not, like, geeked up, like, trying to, you know, impressed by the fact that they have chains so on or whatever. Don't that, bring her to the club. Like, well, you, you want to go, the ideal girl. I don't. I don't go to the club. But if I did, I know that, you know, we've been in those situations before. That's why I don't, I'm, I'm not worried about her going and doing whatever because she's been around some shit she, she knows what's out there she has ex experience yeah so why not just prefer a girl that doesn't that's not interested in the club that doesn't go out and do those things doesn't really talk to other guys and just waiting to be with the right guy because you have no life experience then you don't know what the fuck you want there's a difference between life experience and dick 
Yeah, but why is dick so important? Like, dick is just such an irrelevant. But you're metric, you're equating that to life experience. There's other ways a girl. And why? Wait, why is it even that important for a girl to have life experience? <laughs> because why would you want to date a fucking yokel that has never been around shit or done shit with themselves? Because are you really dating a girl to be impressed and to laugh? That's not. You you you're with the girl so that she's a balance to your life. Like I have all these things going on. A man is out there trying to chase his wealth. Well, and but I've lived a very full life, and if anything. The, the stuff that I bring up in conversation that my girl doesn't know about, to me, that is to her detriment. Like when I bring up The Simpsons and she doesn't know what the fuck I'm talking about or the fact that I had to sit her down and make her watch fucking 10 seasons of Seinfeld. So I you mean, could talk about Seinfeld? You did that? More or less. I mean, she hasn't seen every episode. But, you know, like these, these kind of things. Like I want her to have had a Why do you similar, want to talk about Seinfeld with her? It's just so important. It's just like the foundational blocks of like comedy, I think. Obviously, you can go way back in time, but well, yeah, you can get a girl without experience, and then isn't that more fun? It's like she hasn't seen Seinfeld. Great, let me show you, and then you get to see her reactions, or learning all the jokes for the first time, seeing the George dude like fumble around and be Jewish and stuff. <laughs> the George, dude. whatever. Like that's the, <laughs> that, isn't that way more fun? You're like, well, she gets to see it. Like showing a movie to somebody when they haven't seen it is so much more fun than if you've both already seen the movie because then you get to see the reactions and stuff. You get to. But tell you've never been it. in a conversation with somebody and you realize that you have the same. You know, box of references that you can both refer back to. That's a that's huge a great. Enough. That's a huge like bonding moment between two people. Like if I quoted a movie right now and you were just like, "Oh yeah, blah 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 blah," and you just knew exactly what I was talking about, that would make me feel like we were a little bit closer. Pause. Between two guys, pause. I don't like, see women as that different in that regard. You don't see women as different to men. Well, besides the dick and vagina part, not really as much mentally. I want to have something. You're acting like I'm crazy for wanting to have something in common with the woman that I'm married to or seeing. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to have in common? It's like, wait, oh, we have similarities and stuff. Yes. What? Like, okay, the fact that my girl doesn't have the same reference base that I have when it comes to music will always be something that is a little bit of a gulf between us. But you talk about music on podcasts and stuff. They just leave that for the studio okay. and then go home and then she's there and you just goof around. Hey, stupid. Just I come into the house and she is listening to Taylor Swift. And that to me, that's fine. That's great. She's a woman. Sure. This is what they listen to. I get it. But the fact that I then spice. I put King Vaughn on and it's just like she doesn't know what the fuck I'm listening to. Do you, you want to listen to King Vaughn with your wife? Sometimes. What? <laughs> what? When you put you it want, like that. Your, your wife is throwing up fucking GD and shit. And like, no, it's a BD. Come on. It took a 363rd. Like what? <laughs> you and your wife are gangbanging in the crib cooking omelets? Yeah. I mean, if we had that in common, <laughs> we'd be a little bit closer, right? If I knew every single Taylor Swift song, I guarantee she'd feel a little closer to me. But that no, you know what makes you closer? You listen to your you listen to King Von and she's like, turn this off, and you're like, yeah, 63rd, yeah. And then she's playing Taylor Swift, and you're like, this shit is goofy. Well, look at you, stupid. And she's like twirling. She music. probably never wanted to listen to King Von, but now she actually has a reason to like tell me to turn it off because of the kid. Yeah, you don't want to program your kid with it, King Von. That's demonic music. I know. Isn't it funny that he, the guy's his actual serial killer and nobody's trying to cancel him, but like everybody's coming after Andrew Tate for allegations that are not even proven by anything, but an actual serial killer is being celebrated and all these Twitter accounts having his profile picture. Right. It's, no, I can't it, it deny makes that. No sense. It's kind of insane. But the, what they would say is like, oh, that's his background. He grew up in this environment. So, so he has, he has, <laughs> I, I don't know anything about Andrew Tate's upbringing, but I mean, if you were to find out that he was you know from O-Block, I don't think anybody would give him a, a pass. Andrew a was from the projects in Chicago. Really? The same. Actually, probably pretty close to where King Vaughn's from. But nobody gives him the excuse of that. This needs to be discussed more. 100%. He grew up in the in, in the projects in well. Chicago and in Luton, England. And then nobody's like, he had a trouble upbringing. No one cares. Mm. But when you stay in that degenerate lifestyle and you're a millionaire still banging, whatever, I'm old block. You're 28. Like, what are you doing? Mm. Grow up. And But no, people don't give... People get to hide behind this degenerate minority culture. They get to hide behind the excuse of I'm black, I'm a Mexican or whatever. I had a tough upbringing to just be degenerate and like have all this uh, promote negative behavior. And at no, no matter what age you are, you know, I mean, so you don't like rap music? I do. I, I do. As a whole, it's bad for society. I like yay. I'm still kind of caught up on degenerate minority culture. Yeah. Yeah, black culture in America is just 100% promoting degeneracy. 100%. There's of a lot of great is. things happening under the, what? the, uh, the banner. And, and, of and, and when you think of black culture, what do you think? Well, I mean, okay. There's a lot of, I, I will agree that there's a lot of music that celebrates things that are, you know, objectively Ye bad for society. Yay promotes, 
he's promoting Christian values. He's, it's inspirational. You listen to that, and like I don't even like listening to music as Haram. First off, you're not supposed to listen to music oh based God. on the Quran. So you are so far from being a good Muslim. It's fucking hilarious. No, I'm I'm getting better. I quit drinking, and yeah, yeah and I'm I'm, I'm I'm I pray. I've been praying five times a day. I've been doing the right things, man. I'm taking the right steps. But don't you think that like the the sex stuff and the music stuff? That's probably a yeah. Deal, right? I, I don't I don't really have casual sex. I, I slip up sometimes, obviously, but I I've been really cutting that out. Okay, I'll put it like this. I have a friend who just recently got out of like a three year relationship and at first he's very very excited to i think sleep with a lot of women you know that really appealed to him slept with a few and then you get bored and you go back to it and then we had the conversation the other day where he said that he's basically created like a, a rule for himself which is that he's not going to sleep with any women that he couldn't see himself potentially being in a relationship because it's a waste of time yeah and it's a dirty feeling when you're just hanging out with a girl just to fuck and then you fuck and you finish and you're just like jesus christ what am i doing in you this guys are just room? using each other's bodies yeah yeah like this is just pointless and it's a dirty feeling but when you're a young guy you know you just want to fuck so bad that you don't care like you'll just fuck whatever and just deal with the consequences later but i do think that like in terms of your own personal happiness that is probably a pretty good standard to hold yourself to and when you step out of that you realize that that's not appealing at all unless you're intoxicated like you need to be on some like molly coke alcohol or i was smoking weed like back in college when i was doing that all the time i was always always intoxicated mm. it's funny too is that they never say that the girls i was with uh graped me or anything like that even though i was intoxicated the whole time they say you can't consent mm -hmm. whole time now that i'm sober i've been i've been sober for two months straight nothing and that whole thing is not because you don't want to be in the club. It mm. sucks. It's boring. You don't want to listen to the music. People are annoying. You don't want to be in a random girl's apartment if you're not intoxicated because you have things to do. You're just your mind is too sharp to be in this environment, which is really low energy. Right. Yeah. Just I, I don't I don't want to waste my time with that. So but. is this setting you apart from a lot of your, uh, you know, red pill buddies? Because I've heard like Myron talk about going on multiple dates per day, which I kind of don't even believe. No, it he, just seems like he's true. too busy. Like why <laughs> would you be doing that? He but, does. He does. But doesn't that just seem like a massive waste of your time? to just be fucking random girls that much yeah it is i mean it just rollo was here just now that's the the vasectomy guy saying that you should go get a vest uh transgender surgery you should get a vasectomy so that you can have sex with a bunch of women and not have kids which is literally removing the whole purpose that god gave us does to he have already sex. have kids he has kids yeah okay but he, he he doesn't i don't even know if he has a, i don't i don't know but he was just telling his audience get a vasectomy i saw that like it, that's how you that's the steps to become a high value man is get a vasectomy make money it's like then what's the point of having sex? Am I just seeking pleasure or am I seeking fulfillment? If you actually wanted to, you know, not ever have kids, then I guess I could understand having the vasectomy, but I wouldn't trust anybody in their 20s to make that decision. Like, if you had asked me at, like, 31 or 32 if I wanted to get a vasectomy, I might have been like, shit, all right, why not? Because I never even thought about having kids until I was with my girl for, like, Aren't four years. Aren't you glad years. you didn't? Yeah. There you go. So yeah, that's a terrible just, idea. It's a it's a terrible Especially terrible when you idea. Just pull out. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. You can mm. <laughs> if you don't have the discipline to pull out, then I don't know how you're going to succeed in life. Because yeah. life, you need to be disciplined in every single aspect. I look at dudes who have like you know ten kids, and it's just super obvious that they just are bad at pulling out. And I'm just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, how do you have this little self control in that moment that you know if you bust a nut insider, you might have just cost yourself like. A million dollars, lifetime. Not even in a lifetime. Probably need almost a year or two years now. Like kids a are a million dollars in a year to raise a kid. On a kid. Well, it depends on like if you have to buy a house and cars, certain things. You're gonna buy the kid a house. Well, from to <laughs> to have the kid. Okay, yeah, yeah. You, I mean, yeah, but especially if you really don't have money. But like throughout, say say you're taking care of the kid basically for like twenty years, and you got to spend like fifty grand a year. Yeah, you just spend a million bucks every time you nut in a girl. If, I want to have ten have kids. Kid. I want to have ten. But 10 is a lot. I want 10 over the course the, of my life. The other day, I had to take care of my kid and my niece and my nephew at the same time for maybe like a half hour. And it just made me realize that taking care of three kids at a time or, or two kids is so much exponentially more difficult than taking care of one kid. It's fucking insane. It's like juggling because like one kid just starts to get into something and you have to stop them because one of the kids one the other kids two my kids two and a half and it's just like the amount of attention that it takes to deal with three kids like that is just so much worse whereas my kid i feel like i pretty much have her under control like, there's, there's only so many things that she could fuck with in the house but isn't it better if the wife does most of that work this is why i think it's better to not really i don't really care about a, a woman's life experience or like if she watches seinfeld you just want to stay home and take care of the kids right that would that's her ideal performance 
that that's where she's optimized performance wise at home, cooking, making rac- macaroni posters with the kids, mm-hmm. changing the diapers, bringing them to school, singing macaroni songs. Posters. There you go. All that goofy stuff, you know, playing Wii sports. That's, that's what I want her to do. And then homeschooling too. I don't want my kids to be in school because you just see how much woke garbage is being promoted in here. I don't, I don't want to be around that. If these, like these LGBT people are in the park yelling, we're coming for your children. Most of these kindergarten teachers, they're the ones putting up pride flags in the school. They're the ones who want to be teachers. They're, that's how they get the kids. That is kind of scary. That, that's what's happening. Like they, I think we should be able to agree on a curriculum and a you know culture at schools that is not deeply offensive to the more conservative parents, right? Yeah, that's just called homeschool. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. I worry about that as well. Where are you gonna are you gonna homeschool your kids? You're gonna bring them to SIAP school. We're gonna put them in really really high end private schools, but. We started to see a little bit of evidence of the fact that some of these schools are more woke than other ones because you, 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 I, I didn't visit any of them, but like some of them you can see on their websites and shit that they have like hardcore pride shit going on and like all like crazy woke shit like on the school websites. What does that have to do with education? Like, why are you educating them with that? If you even think about what the pride flag stands for, it's just sex stuff, lesbian, two girls having sex gay it's all sex right. that's what lgbt that's when you put the flag in a kindergarten classroom you're showing kids this is weird sex yeah. every day that's what they instead of having the cross instead of having the american flag they made the american flag racist and they made the pride flag mandatory i'm kind of like scared of anyone who would be teaching my kid and teaching her that the fact that she's white is like this really really important part of her personality yeah and that that should be like a dividing factor between her and other kids because i love the fact that i see my kid and she'll be playing with a black kid on the playground and it's it clearly no does not matter to her at all in right. her brain and that's such a better route for for you to go i think than to like be really highlighting the differences and being like well this is how you're different than her and you need to treat her differently because you know i don't know that's how they that friendship gets ruined because then they go to school those two your daughter and the the black friend that she has they go to school and they start getting programmed with all this stuff and about slavery and then they start looking at each other weird like are you against me are you with me and then they they start talking about it more and that's when they end up becoming divided because of what the education teaches us but you do have to teach the kids about slavery you have to teach them about it but the way that they teach they teach white kids that it's bad to be white mm. that you're a bad person you should feel bad that you're in a position of privilege and that's why the black lives matter rally they're like white people stand at the front and make a barricade for the blacks what yeah that actually happened <laughs> and this crazy. is how they sigh up to an entire generation of upper middle class white people because all of them were like probably raised in christian homes they had good families and then they sent them to college and then in college for four years straight the white kid has said it's bad that you're white and then they have a bunch of degenerate sex. And then they're drinking and doing drugs every single Friday night. And then they leave school with blue hair. They're pansexual. They're guilty that they're white. And they're like, oh, I have a gender studies degree. Where do I work? And they don't know where to go. And then they end up at a park saying, we're coming for your children. That's how you change. That's how you ship the wealth from the white people who are upper middle class to this degeneracy that we have now. Yeah. A lot of that is kind of scary. I'm not going to lie. Don't send your daughter to college, man. College is what's scary. College is a is a giant indoctrination program. Ugh. Just they, they they learn nothing that they can't learn from Chat GBT. Like why would you? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a waste. Like all of it's online. <laughs> My kid could have gone to Harvard, but I decided to just set her up with an AI chat bot instead. That's a better teacher, and she won't dye her hair blue and become pansexual. I mean, I think part of the problem is like we we've talked about moving to Calabasas, and it's like that's the kind of scary part. Is like are they going to become indoctrinated into this like super concerned with wealth? culture that exists when like the kardashians are right down the street yeah because when you see like the way that a lot of like that chris jenner is like raising her daughters it's like clearly them being attractive is paramount to their existence like this is like the number one thing that she's teaching right. her kids and for me it's like i would much rather raise my kid to like not think that how attractive she is is the most important thing about her it's not i would like for her to think that it's irrelevant for the most part until she maybe gets uh, but then it's weird because it's like you're not going to be able to keep them from thinking that for their entire life well let's just keep social media away from her as much as possible yeah i definitely agree with that and then just protect her her spirit and her energy that that's the most important thing because how she looks is like that's there's not that much you could do about that of course you can keep her in shape and feed her good food but the kardashian family for example they are keeping each other attractive they they it's so paramount that they're pretty not so that they can have good husbands but so that they can fuck nba black guys and just get more money and monetize their relationships and be in the news all the time be attractive so that uh nba players and rappers want to be with you it's nothing healthy it's just promoting more of this empty cycle it's promoting that casual sex culture yeah 
So, yeah, I, 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 that's the, the, I don't know. You're the father. I'm, I'm, I'm here telling you. <laughs> like, but that's how I want to raise my kids. It's just like you, you have the way that you want to raise your kids, but then you also, like, I look at people that I know who have kids that are a little bit older, and you just realize that keeping them completely separate from the prevailing culture that we live in is going to be very difficult in the long run. And that at times, like, it might be totally fucking useless and that maybe you're better off at like, you know, letting them use TikTok. But at the same time, like no. they're just going to find so much fucking awful shit on there. It's kind of, it's kind of scary. It's so quick. I mean, I, I've seen, so we, you've seen it, how, how quickly social media can brainwash people. How mm -hmm. it can give them ideas that they never would have had without it. Like what? <sighs> Chris and Mr. Beast. <laughs> you think that he was brainwashed by TikTok into becoming trans? A hundred percent. Why can't you just respect somebody I knew choosing to live their life that way? I knew him. I'm telling you, like I you remember, spent time around him. Yeah, before I, I I talk about this all the time. I used to work for Mr. Beast like when I was 17, 18, when I was in college, and he was just a regular white dude chewing dip, driving his truck, right, with the AK-47, with that with the Southern accent at the gas. I just got a new truck. But what do you think he has to gain from it's, coming out as trans? It doesn't have it. As, well, gain is validation from social media. Uh -huh. more acceptance and also you get over that white guilt because white people have this thing the whole time like oh well am i better than everyone because i'm white and you feel bad like you don't you didn't earn anything you got because you're white yeah. you're a privilege so how do you become a minority as a white person you cut off your dick now you're one now you're a person of color but a very small percentage of them ever end up cutting off their dick for the record that's true but there's other ways like you dye their hair blue and like now am i now i'm pansexual and now i'm sucking dick like have it, you seen the the photos of the trans penises oh yeah, they look so weird. It's, it's like insane the looking. But it's, I think it's kind of like misleading because I think a very small percentage of people do that. Even if they don't do it, they're still dressing up like that and leaving their family. Yeah. So it's just, I mean, that, that's obviously the big one, but that is the actual transition. I think the difference between me and you is that even when I was seeing you talking to Gorlock the Destroyer, it's like, and did she choose that name or somebody came up with that for her? That was Twitter. I was convinced that that was a Photoshop when I kept seeing the images of the Whatever podcast and seeing her in there. I, I thought for sure it had to be a Photoshop <laughs> until I saw it enough times. And I was like, wait, this is real. Yeah. But uh, yeah, like you just really refused to uh, you just to gender this person correctly while you were on stream with them and Aiden, huh? Because it's not, I'm, I'm tired of playing pretend with all these people. I just, I, I mean, I talked about Tranny so much because it's the perfect example of just everybody having to lie and trick their minds and pretend like this is something that they're not. And I'm, I don't want to keep playing this game with people. I don't want to keep on, uh, letting political correctness culture win. For example, like when I said uh, black culture promotes degeneracy, that's something that everybody knows. And like you listen to any rap music, like Dirk, I listen to Lil Dirk all the time. He's rapping about murder all the time. Like literally all the time. I mean, he's Muslim and I hope, alhamdulillah, he becomes a better Muslim, but he's rapping about murder constantly. That He knows that that will sell more music. He knows that rap beef and like, I'm going to kill you. You're going to kill me. Bro, you're 29 with kids. Still talking about like killing other people and you're going to risk your life over, over music. Mm -hmm. Like everything that hip hop promotes besides yay and besides a few like, you know, Christian rap or stuff like that. It's all just drugs, murder, bitches. And we all know that when you, when they talk about, we need to protect black culture. Th this is the number one. This is how you prove that black, um, black culture in America promotes degeneracy because when a black person becomes more affluent, when they put on a suit, when they get a good job, when they speak correctly, you're speaking white. Yo, why are you talking like a white boy? I'm just speaking English properly. When they talk about keeping black culture black in those affluent areas, like as a lawyer, as a doctor, they mean they want a doctor who's also sagging. They want a, a doctor who's still banging and throwing up signs. I mean, I agree that there's a lot of stuff within hip hop culture that is kind of negative, for sure. All of it. <laughs> all of it. <laughs> all of it. <laughs> like, uh, you really put me on the spot here to like think it. about it objectively. What, what, what do they promote that's positive? Besides, like in some of their interviews, you listen to like Polo G, for example. He'll go in an interview. I'm like, yeah, man, I, I like what you're talking about. Like you're uplifting people, but you listen to the music and I'm like, oh, this is all murder. Yeah, well, if you watch like a little Dirk interview, you get a very different side of him. Whereas he's going to magnify the stuff that is you know violent or controversial in the music because he knows that that will work in the music. It will sell. And it feels like the only stuff that he holds back on is the stuff that he thinks will literally like get him in trouble in a courtroom but everything else goes yeah pretty much yeah and when you actually look at the way he lives his life i mean obviously he's not killing anyone he's not you know he's in a relationship it doesn't seem like he's cheating on her or anything right. 
he's talking about religion and stuff. He doesn't bring the religious stuff up in the music no. like on the new <laughs> album much. Because you can't talk about Islam and music because it's haram to even listen to music. I don't know if that's really like occurred to him yet. No, he's he's he must he's know. acknowledged that he that, must know. I mean, this is common. I think that probably a lot of people who consider themselves Muslims just kind of that's a little bit extreme to them. That's the correct one. I just spent a couple of days in San Diego um, giving daba, which means like talking to people about Islam. And like when we leave the park or when we go from the mosque back and forth in prayer, like there's just no music. You just just listen to that, and you realize how much better that is for your mental because that it does switch your brain off. Like when you get in that routine, you get in your car and you're playing, yeah, GD gang bang bang. You're just like nodding your head, and then you're you you get into that state. You become like what you're around. You know, mm -hmm. you're the sum of the five people that you're around the most, right? If you listen to music about murder, then you're gonna your brain is starting to program to become used to this stuff, and then you're like, yeah, murder is cool, gang bang, and then you're like, you start you get a gun. And then you start sagging a little more and then you start to emulate that. So when you don't listen to that or like if you just listen to the Quran, for example, you're going to feel better. Your spirit's going to be more protected. Mm. But I grew up listening to extremely violent, extremely misogynistic hip hop. And I would be lying if I said it didn't affect me in yeah, yeah. ways that probably I wouldn't want for my kid. But at the same time, I mean, they are it's popular because it's providing like a gritty, very real perspective on the life that they grew up in. And I think that's you know that's what people are going to Little Dirk for, right? They want to see. They want that raw feeling, but that's the hypocrisy. These people are rich; they don't kill anybody, and that's all they know how to rap about. They right. don't really ever try to elevate it. I've spent a lot of time in my life listening to King Von and all these other Chicago rappers, but I have no interest in like watching an action movie because it's, it just feels fake. It's it feels fake. stupid. You want that real murder? I mean, I I I would be lying if I denied it you, know? you want that authentic murder if i just want to hear you know <laughs> listening to I get what you're saying. well think about think about soundcloud rap soundcloud rap was like primarily dudes who had never really done anything violent and definitely weren't like from the streets or in gangs or whatever rapping mm -hmm. saying that they're going to pull up and shoot you or whatever and then that really like diminished and made way for like the situation we're in now where a huge percentage of the most popular hip-hop is dudes who really, really are from that environment. I just interviewed a dude who killed two people and he got off on both of them for self-defense. What did he, what, what does he have to bring to the table? I mean, his music is really good. It is. But you could imagine that probably the narrative or the fact, like what's going to make people click on his interview? Probably the fact that at some point there's going to be a title that says oh, something yeah, that about was beating, beating two bodies. Yeah, murder on my podcast. Like what? And then yeah. people, yeah. But That's I mean, people want to hear real shit, right? It's it's there's real shit, and then there's just people want to be excited by degeneracy. People mm -hmm. live vicariously through that. It's the same thing like when a girl becomes addicted to a murder documentary. It's because they they, they like to feel that excitement of like putting themselves in that situation. It's, it's that's not something. Just because it's real doesn't mean it's good. Just because it's out there doesn't mean that it needs to be something that you put into your mind and, and put into your soul. Like yes, it exists, but like. It, what what new information did you learn? Okay, you, there's people that kill people. You are kind of like making me realize that I should probably dwell on why I enjoy extremely gangster hip hop a little bit more because just accepting that because it sounds good doesn't seem like a good enough reason to continue to listen to it for the rest of my life. I, mean, I listen to rap all the time where I'm just like, oh, how would I ever explain that lyric to my kid? There's no explanation. Besides, well, there is an explanation. It's just deeply depressing and kind of sad. Yeah. I mean, I, I, re I realized that listening to, to Playboy Cardi. I like this music, too. It sounds good. But I listened to a whole lot of Red, and that, that's like a demonic album, like rapping about murder, 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 murder all the time. I was listening to it, and then afterwards, you, you're just in a weird headspace. Next time you listen to, like, violent uh, murder music, just, like, think about, analyze where your head is at afterwards. Is mm -hmm. it, like, in a, like, you know what? I'm going to go feed some kids. I'm going to go save a church. The Cardi stuff seems worse to me than King Von because it's like, it's just theatrical. It's just murder lyrics for the sake of sounding cool. Yep. Which is like almost worse to me than King Von rapping about some murder that he actually did. I don't know if I could say worse, but it's definitely different. Which is lame in a way. If you can only be cool by using murder, then that's lame. But if you can be cool, the, the highest level of art would be inspiration would be trying to uplift if you can be cool spreading a positive message that's way better than than anything that they promote these other but do you feel like even as a you know commentator or a public intellectual 
Am I? I'm a streamer. I was just chuckled as I said it. Yeah, a streamer, whatever you want to call it. Uh, do you feel like you end up kind of falling victim to some of the same stuff? Because, 100%. Because you roasting this trans person, I mean, it's not terribly kind, right? But it definitely probably got you more fans and followers than... I don't think I said anything that was rude. You just said you're not a dude. I mean, you're not a girl. Well, he brought on that other kid who was kind of... Yeah, that wasn't me. They were roasting. That wasn't me. And afterwards, worse. yeah, they, yeah, that, yeah. They what? They patched it up. What do you mean they patched it up? Did they? Oh, I don't know if they did, but afterwards, I'm like, yeah, this is too far. That that was like at a certain point, it could become bullying. Right. right, and that's why that stream was probably age restricted when I watched it on YouTube. Yeah, the other day. it was. <laughs> <laughs> Not that that's Aiden's biggest problem or anything. No, you think Aiden's like career is fucked up because he's just gone too close to the sun in terms of the offensive content? Here's the thing. When he was just having rappers on stream and just doing degenerate stuff, like people were smoking weed and rappers yeah. talk about gangbanging murder, nobody canceled him. Mm. When he says there's two genders, which everybody knows is true, when he has Andrew Tate on, which everybody knows he's innocent, then people are like, oh, you're, you're, uh. once he starts getting to the truth and trying to figure things out, he's like, what's going on? Mm. When he asks a question about like, wait, is this good? That's when he's a brand risk. Right. But when he's just being a degenerate, he has porn stars on and the rappers are there like talking about that. No one cares. When he's being gay, nobody cancels him. When he's there like, oh, I'm sucking dick. <laughs> nobody. That Why is that not a brand risk? But it's a brand risk when he's doing push-ups. Yeah. You are making a pretty good point with some of that. But think about it. All Free the, But all the rappers he was having on and stuff, it's like he's not getting like the, the gangster side of them or the violent side of them. They're, they're just hanging out on some regular ass shit. And that's why people were so drawn to it is because they see a human side of a murderer. Yeah, he's hanging out. <laughs> I'm, I'm, probably a very small percentage of rappers are actual murderers. But, you know, if he's sitting there with Apollo G or, a, you know, whoever, it's like, you know, they're he's getting like a very like cool, chill, humble version of them. If anything, that's what something I realized through Aiden and, and some of these other guys, Gideon, whatever, is that like these are dudes who they're not like hip hop influencers. They're just concerned with entertainment. And that audience is 10 or 20 or 50 times bigger than the audience for people who are like really, really focused on one specific style of music. Yeah, so it works really well together. Hmm. But when you start becoming like when you're not just a goofy guy like Aiden was a couple of years ago and then you're like asking questions and you know, pissing people off because you're telling the truth, then that entertainment dude can't associate with you because it blows the whole spot up. Mm. Then they start asking questions like, wait, what are you really talking about in your music? Right. Are you actually promoting anything good? What's going on here? And they're, they're kind of stuck. They're like, I just want to smoke weed and promote my album. But you got to be more careful on stream because I saw you and Zerka hollering at those girls and then you realize they're underage. Oh, come on. They're, they're like, <laughs> I didn't holler at them. I just had, how old are you? And they're no, like, you're like, oh, I think you're perfect for me. And you, you're perfect for Zerka. And then they're like, we are about to be 15. And no, like, then oh! I asked, I asked Adam, I said, how old are you guys? And they said, we're 14. I'm like, okay, bye. Left. Right. But when it's clipped up on a stream, like, and also, are we really hollering at them? Or are we just on Omegle? Right. You know, farming content. Like, how I much like, can you really holler? Yeah. Yeah. Am I like, yeah, let's actually go on a date with Omegle girl. No, it's just, I'm just, I'm just here on Omegle clicking. Whoa, double date. Oh, you're 14. Whoa. You no, know, I had to learn that lesson because doing the man on the street type stuff, not only do you have to ID them if you're going to say anything even remotely sexual to them, but you also have to like, even if they are of age, if they don't look like if they look kind of young, then you also don't want to use that either. What were you talking about on Man on the Street interviews where you had to ID them? We were doing uh, some plug talk, Man on the Street type stuff. Which uh, Okay, so we did it at the porn convention, yeah, and that. obviously everybody, everything's on the up and up because you're not going to be able to get in there if you're underage. But then we did it in public one time, and like we uploaded one of them, and we, I, we, uh, we ID'd the people before we asked them like what kind of porn they watched or whatever, and they were of age, but then like they kind of looked young. So like immediately the comment section just starts filling up with people like, this is weird, and I'm like, oh, okay, I got to deleted it luckily it didn't turn into a thing yeah luckily well they they try to get me for anything right now because there's very little dirt on me and all the dirt that that was just stuff i said on podcasts mm. there's nothing that people could really get me for so like when i'm on omegle and then people are like whoa gotcha or like when i'm on here with you and mm. i'm like yeah i don't like eating pussy whoa he's gay like people will really reach to try to get something to to cancel me for but luckily there's, there's not really there's nothing yeah, where do you see your place at in the game these days like are you are you solely about spreading islam to the people no i mean that's uh see that's going to become so boring like nobody would want to i i think that's the highest form of your voice is like is like spreading the truth of god mm. but obviously if i do that all the time and i become like the god guy people are going to become oh shut up it's boring so you need to diversify your content so I, i've been doing a lot of like some of my old school videos that i was doing on youtube on my main channel even before the streaming i've been doing those on on twitter now 
um, and Rumble. But I did these two videos called Rat Race and How I Learned to Love the Unabomber. And those videos are really detailed. And like in my old style, I edited them. They're well shot. They're like they're like short films, right? Those two videos, Rat Race and How I Learned to Love the Unabomber. What I really did you recommend learn to you watch love them. about the Unabomber? The Unabomber was psyoped by the CIA. They gave they put him under MK Ultra when he was in Harvard. He was 16, and then he, he went to Harvard, and they had these professors like come lure him in, like, oh, you're so smart. Tell me all your ideas and everything. And then they, he would open up, and then they strap you to a chair. They're like, we're just going to like do a test on your brain. And then he would say all of his ideas, and they'd humiliate him. They'd give him LSD. They would try to ruin his mind because he had such a high, he was, had a 168 IQ. They tried to destroy his mind because that's they were developing MKUltra after World War II to try to see how to use it in warfare against the Russians or against spies that were in the country. The CIA were, were, was using people like Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber, uh, to you, as a guinea pig, as a mm. test uh, subject. And he ended up hating society. And he, he wrote this manifesto about the future of technology. And he pre pretty much predicted how social media would destroy a whole generation back in the 70s and 80s. And so, yeah, he, he did some bad things. He killed some people. Mm. Um, but compared to the rappers, the rappers are just killing people on their block. He killed uh, professors and scientists that were spreading, um, that were changing the world to be worse in his point of view. So, of course, is murder good? No. But this is just like one of your little tricks, huh? Because you're always trying to like talk about why Hitler had some redeeming qualities too, right? He had good drip. <laughs> They had he had a great uniform. No, I, I don't. I don't. I don't think. I mean, Hitler was a bad person. But the, my problem with that and, and why I challenge that is that you have to say Hitler was a terrible person. But when it comes to Mao, when it comes to Stalin, when it comes to Pol Pot, people don't have the same visceral reaction. Call him evil. Like okay, well, I mean, what about the other world leaders who kill people now? What about Hillary? What about Joe Biden? What about Obama? Obama Biden just, kill. Huh? Who'd Biden kill? Biden promoted all these. Biden uh, supported the Iraq War. Right. And the, o Obama destroyed Libya when it was almost becoming liberated after Gaddafi was doing a good job of trying to promote, uh, trying to make Libya free. And then they, they completely nuked him. And uh, see, but nobody has this thing. Like, you need to call Obama evil because he killed people. But nobody there are says a lot that. of people out there pushing the Obama was evil thing. That they're really anti drones and anti, you know, blowing up the Middle East. Not the same way that Hitler, Hitler is th that he's the example of the worst person of all time. Well, people. he killed a lot more people and for much more specific reasons. At least Obama was doing it under the guise of protecting our country, right? It was, it was the, I mean, Hitler used it under the guise of protecting his country too. Against the Jews. But it was, it was under the guise of protecting his country. I mean, he, Obama did it against the Libyans. Right. But I mean, like, radical Islam really is and was a danger to our country, especially post 9 11, right? Was and, it? I mean, yeah, right? What, what were they doing? Well, they flew some planes into the World Trade Center. I don't know if you caught that. Mm, that's not true. No? It wasn't them. Oh, my God. It wasn't them. I got to send you some interviews. Shout out to Ryan Dawson. You should check this out. Oh, uh, I can only go so far because we're on YouTube and this will get you strike. But think about, like, why would this type of information get you deleted off of YouTube? But I, it, it wasn't the people that they said it was. I can already think of a couple of things we might have to edit out of this. Nah, keep it. I honestly, like, this is going really well and everything, but I, I kind of have to get back to the kid before sleep. So this might have to be a, a shorter Yeah, yeah. Podcast. I got to... Go do Bradley Martin too. You're gonna go do that. Yeah. What are you gonna talk about with him? Probably this stuff, but um, yeah, I want to. He says he wants to get a wife soon, so maybe we'll have a similar conversation. I'm trying to promote fatherhood and family. I mean, it should be easy for him to get a wife because I went to his gym opening and holy shit, the fitness chicks, dude, so hot. There are so many hot chicks that work out of his gym. You like the built girls? I mean, I've never really like considered myself to be somebody who was into that, but. <laughs> When I went there, I was pretty astonished at how many hot chicks there were. That's a great plug for his gym. If I was a single man right now, I think I would get full throttle into the fitness world, and that's where I would find a wife at. Yeah, it's good because they have their mind right. They're not in the club. They're focusing on health. Exactly. Mm. I need that kind of influence. When my girl starts eating cake at night and shit, uh. it fucks me up because then I start eating cake. Yeah. Give her some celery. Yeah, she's got celery. She's just not eating it late at night. Well, thanks, Adam. <laughs> Sneak up. I appreciate you, man. It's always fun. I wish that we could have gone longer, but let's tap in next time you're in town. All right, man. I'll text you. Appreciate you, dog. No jumper. Bow.